Wow, it's really windy today and I am out on a meetup doing architecture. It's okay, but I don't love it. I'm always up for learning something new. My number one priority is to try and keep up with people. And <laughs> before I've even started this vlog, it's already going badly. I may not do a lot of photos today just because I actually just don't want to go through this process alone today. We're in the beautiful area of Bourneville famous for Cadbury's chocolates and that sort of thing and we're gonna just take some pictures of some lovely vintage buildings maybe museums maybe the factory who knows so that's what's happening today what I might try to do is maybe shoot a series of photographs maybe I might do doors or something like that If I can kind of get the vlogging in as well as taking photos because my group are getting away from me the, the few that are left and I've got to really speed things up so sorry guys if there's not a lot of photos in this one it is quite a quirky little town um, I've got like a little ch Paris church behind me it's getting a little bit busier now as we're starting to get more people coming onto the streets but I just love the architecture of those buildings Look at those buildings behind there What I love about living in England is you get a lot of really old style buildings. And I think this is so cool. I'm just gonna stand in the middle here and show you what I can see. of a shame that the sky is so overcast sometimes the phone can really struggle and I would shoot in raw I'm shooting in HDR at the moment and I would shoot in raw but I just don't have the time to be dilly-dallying because the group really move on fast I always think to myself I definitely need to come back here again so I can do things at my own pace I probably will and should but yeah them's the breaks look behind me what's that Cadbury's world chocolate <laughs> Got some crazy people waving in the background. But wow, here we are. I love this place. I find it so charming and so cool. I think Cadbury's has been taken over by an American company now. But um, love coming here. I think I will come back again. I, the last time I came here, they you, you have this deal where you come to visit. Just at every single station, as you go through the factory, they would ply you with just copious amounts of chocolate. You drink some of it, you eat some of it. It was just crazy. But I remember loving that chocolate high. I really shouldn't eat chocolate that much, but hey, it's chocolate. One of the things I'm noticing about architectural photography on an iPhone is that I think it would really work if you have wider lenses. Yes. And personally, I have been battling for the longest time not to use wide like extra things on my phone because I'm a purist ah let's really see what a phone can do just all on its own but actually that's a it's a bit of a silly way to think really because most cameras can have lens them. there's nothing wrong with that and this is something that's possible for your phone and it's not cumbersome I think I'm very into the small form factor and ease of use so I've kind of always thought that adding a lens to my phone is just gonna make it like a big phone like why am I gonna put a lens on my phone if it becomes as clunky to use as a bigger phone I mean camera but to be honest sticking a clip-on lens or a screw in lens isn't really going to make that much of a difference to ease of use so I haven't been able to fit buildings in the way I would like to and that's just down to wideness of lenses so I think I'm going to have to at some point invest in lenses if I'm to try doing architectural photography more seriously so have you guys got lenses what are you guys doing about your architectural photography are you using anything on your smartphones let me know
Yeah, now I just gotta find the crew that I came with. They're having lunch. We'll see if we can find them somewhere in this lovely chocolatey world. I think that's what I love about Birmingham is you get so many different kinds of things, like especially parks. We have a lot of parks, a lot of really wild areas. And if you're into nature, I definitely am. This is like a perfect place to live. It is pretty windy in Birmingham, but gotta love it though. A lot of green, I love green. Green is go. It's a go. Yes, I know that's a rubbish pun. Yeah. It's been an interesting one because I've kind of really been struggling to take photos and vlog at the same time because at one point the phone died and um, but I've resorted to chatting to strangers and just got interested in seeing at people's little pets and I think it's pretty cool because people have these little cute little dogs and that so I thought I'd take some pictures of that to be honest with you like today is not the most agendaful and goal-oriented day I'm just kind of going about it and just getting anything that I can and so far I haven't really got anything that I feel I can write home about obviously I will show you the results hmm. feels like school all over again here miss um here are the Here's my math homework, full well knowing that it's going down the drain. But what can you do, right? Some days are like that, some days you go out, you're inspired, you've got ideas. Other days you're out of your depth and you're just trying stuff. But I think it all adds up into something meaningful at the end. Remember, it's all about practice, isn't it, right? So this is my target practice. Next time I'm out here, I know I'll definitely have a better idea of what I'm doing. So, yeah. And it, I'm excited to see what it would be like if I came back here during the spring or during summer, something like this. Because weather can just really change the feel and look of a place and even your mood. It's a funny thing. I know people don't talk about this often, but your mood has a lot to do with the kind of photos that you're taking as well. Yeah, there's a little bit of a psychological element, I believe, to it. If you're in an upbeat mood, there's something different about your photos than when you're feeling a little bit depleted, which I am. I've been down with a, 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 some kind of bug or something, and so I haven't been feeling 100%, and I'm just now coming out of it, and I can feel that my energy resources haven't been what they are, and I can feel it in the lackadaisical way in which I'm taking photos. I don't seem to be putting as much care and effort into what I'm doing, partly because this is just taking ages to do because I'm trying to switch between my phone and today I have my stabilizer and that's what's taking a lot of my photo time setting up the stabilizer to get a decent solid image as well as trying to take photos those things are not helping <sighs> here we go okay can I say in my defense today is my first day doing the street photography with my stabilizer, my gimbal, my steady cam. Secondly, I'm not up to it because I'm not 100%. Thirdly, this is not my discipline. Okay. <laughs> There's no excuses. Today was, wasn't that day. Just not my day today. <sighs> Um, the day's over, everybody's left, and I'm just waiting for my ride to come and pick me up from this lovely little village. And um, how do I feel it went? Honestly speaking, I knew from the gate that I may struggle just because buildings, architecture, is not typically been something I've been interested in, so I haven't paid a lot of attention to that style of photography, but it's definitely been a good thing in the sense that you've always got to be stretching yourself and trying new things. So yeah, we'll see how that worked out on another level I did a very foolish thing my phone brightness was turned down and so a lot of the times I kept thinking the photos were underexposed or overexposed just because I just couldn't tell um, having reviewed them on my phone they don't look as bad as I imagined still not anything to write home about but I'm glad I came out I'm glad I gave it a shot and I think that's what photography is about a lot of the time is about put just trying just do it I know you don't feel like you're good at it or that 
feeling it, but it's just muscle memory, just repeated action tends to get the job done. So yeah, all in all, it's been a good day. One thing that's quite interesting, as I've been chatting with the different photographers, is how many people are very much into their editing. So this is the great editing debate. It keeps going on. How much is too much editing? Um, from what I can tell, most people nowadays go into photography definitely planning to edit after the fact. So no one's expecting to get something. Well, I don't want to say no one's expecting it, but it seems like most people are not expecting to nail it in camera from the kind of read that I was getting just from asking people. Obviously, this is not a categoric study and I've asked everybody, but I'm definitely sensing that people go into photography thinking, well, we're gonna edit it, so it's gonna be fine. Um, where I stand personally on that is that's fine. I think that's not a bad way to do it. Personally, I have other kind of measures, the standards that I hold myself to. I try to get the best photo that I can in camera. Um, I believe that you can edit in camera. And when I say that, I don't mean actual editing once you've taken the photo I mean when you're setting your exposure and your shutter speed and your brightness and all these kinds of things when you're setting all that up I believe that's the in-camera editing that you need to do so that you don't have to overcompensate after the fact of course I'm sure there's no right or wrong way it's just something that I'm trying to strive to is to not have to bring photos back to life in post but to just polish them that's just how I look at the world how do you do it? Let me know. But that's been my day in Bourne, uh, in, on the Bourneville Green, in the lovely Sully Oak, and it's been good. I've enjoyed being around other people. Still very slow in how I move, but I think that's a personal thing that I don't necessarily want to give up. I think in photo walks, you kind of have to keep up with the group. There's a social aspect to it, and I think that's a good thing. Um, but I also think that as a photographer, take as long as you need. I mean, if, if a spot speaks to you, if something speaks to you, spend the time, get the picture that you're dying to get. Don't just feel that you have to rush on. And I think I'll probably have to do a lot more of these kinds of walks on my own just because I wasn't able to ever fully realize my vision. And that's just something that comes with the territory. But I do love the social aspect of a photo walk and you do learn a lot of different ideas and ways of doing things from other photographers, none of which are right or wrong, but yeah. It's good to know how other people approach things, what people are into, and all that sort of thing. And I, 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 I mean you could always subscribe. Do the right thing.